If you want to squeeze a bit more performance out of your CPU without upgrading, overclocking is definitely the way to go. The only problem is you could easily spend half a day trying to get the best settings to find the best potential overclock out of your processor. But what if there was another way, where with a single click and a few minutes later, you're done. Free performance, a stable overclock, and in record time. Well, that's what we're testing today, because there's no reason that I should have to still overclock my CPU like a caveman when we have self-driving cars and advanced deep learning algorithms that can be trained to do almost anything. Surely at this point, it's not too much to ask my motherboard to overclock my CPU with a reasonable voltage. It just so happens that ASUS have written a tool that claims to do exactly that, and it's appropriately called AI overclocking. But just how good is it? And how does it compare to manually overclocking the CPU yourself? Let's take a look. Before we dive in, let's first understand the differences between a good overclock and a bad one, and also why finding a good overclock requires a lot of time and testing. So a good CPU overclock is one that is stable in even the most demanding workloads, for example, rendering and encoding programs, and also one where the voltage applied isn't too far off the absolute minimum to hold that overclock completely stable. Bad or lazy overclocks either don't have full stability in those programs, or they typically see the set voltage a bit higher than required simply because the user didn't do enough testing and validation, or maybe they just don't care about those higher thermals and that higher power consumption. And so trying to find the minimum voltage to stabilize a given clock frequency for a CPU is a seriously exhaustive process, and those who have overclocked their processes and tried to step down the voltage to something more power efficient and thermally efficient will know exactly what I mean. For example, 5 gigahertz Hertz at 1.2 volts is going to run significantly cooler and quieter in your system as compared to 5 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. So enter ASUS's AI overclocking tool. Note that this is not an overclocking profile or preset that is simply applied to your CPU and forgotten about, but instead claims to analyze your CPU and CPU cooler to predict the optimal settings. Keywords there being predict and optimal. The other really interesting component here is that they claim the overclock will be frequently adjusted as it's continually re-evaluating your system thermals. So if you upgrade or downsize your CPU cooler or maybe adjust the fan speed, theoretically the overclock should regulate itself up or down accordingly. But before we climb into the algorithm a bit deeper, let's just see if this works at all. It's not exactly a one-click process, but it is pretty damn close. All all you'll need to do is boot into Windows 10 on a Z390, X299 or Z490 ASUS ROG motherboard after loading optimized defaults, run some demanding workloads for 5 to 10 minutes, climb back into the BIOS and under CPU core ratio select AI optimized. Hit F10 to save and exit, and supposedly that's it. In our case, we're using ASUS's Z490 Maximus 12 Hero paired with a 10900K and a 360mm all-in-one cooler, and that's running on an open test bench. Now, a stock 10900K on this motherboard will eventually settle to around 4.2 GHz on all cores after a sustained period, and 4.9 GHz if you completely unlock the power limits. And to my surprise, our one-click overclock actually did something productive and didn't burn or crash the entire system, overclocking the 10900K to 5.1 GHz on all 10 cores. That's not bad at all, and I'd definitely consider that a nice frequency bump over stock for the average user. What was more impressive though is the voltage that the AI OC program decided was suitable for 5.1 GHz. It wasn't actually too bad at all. It ran at just 1.23 volts in heavy non-AVX workloads like Cinebench, and a slightly higher but still reasonable 1.25 volts in AVX workloads like Blender. But it's not just the all core frequency that gets a boost here, but the max frequency across three cores was lifted to a massive 5.4 GHz. When we run a single threaded render on Cinebench, those frequencies seem to be backed up. We see some pretty impressive results with a score of 552 points. So things are looking pretty good here so far. Five minutes in and one click and we've got a nice 5.1 GHz all core turbo for our 10900K 
and a three core turbo of up to 5.4, which is actually really impressive. But then I restarted the system and things changed dramatically. Now, when I ran Cinebench, the 10900K was boosting to 5.2 gigahertz across all 10 cores and running a fairly heavy 1.33 volts. It would do that right up until the package temp exceeded 90 degrees C, then it would dial back a bit and then proceed to boost to 5.2 again. Although this is technically a safe overclock, this wasn't a good experience for the user. And I was personally wondering why my test bench was repeatedly ran up and down over and over again. Eventually, I rebooted the system a fourth time and the AI OC tool corrected this, which was great to see, but let's understand why this did happen in the first place. So there are two main variables in ASUS's AI OC program in its current form, cooler score and optimism. Cooler score is exactly that. It's a value between 30 and 250, which scores your cooler based on thermal performance. The better the score, the higher the overclock. While cooler score seems to behave as an overclock scalar, optimism works as a bit of an offset. Values above 100 will shift the overclock higher and values lower will pull things back a bit. So the reason that our all core overclock jumped from 5.1 gigahertz to 5.2 gigahertz with a more aggressive voltage is because our cooler score jumped from 170 to 189. Note that you can actually enter this in manually and see the per core frequencies change right above it. For example, a cooler score of 150 would give us a three core turbo of 5.4 gigahertz, a five core turbo of 5.2, eight core at 5.1 and a 10 core turbo of five gigahertz on this processor. You can also tell the software to just stop training itself and adjusting the cooler score repeatedly if you're happy with how it's performing and aren't going to change your CPU cooler anytime soon. Also, out of curiosity, I removed all but one fan on our 360 mil cooler and ran some tests to see how the overclock would respond. And while it didn't make any changes to the frequency or voltage, it did lower the cooler score to 163. The next question I had was, what happens when you swap to a different CPU of the same SKU? In our case, a just second 10900K, because as we know, we can expect different overclocking potential between multiple CPUs within the same class. And honestly, I expected to get the same result here, seeing as the algorithm so far seems to be mostly based off of pre-trained overclock data and mostly the effectiveness of your own CPU cooler. But swapping to the second 10900K sample, which can't achieve as high a manual overclock as the first one, the AI OC program barely overclocked it at all. We end up at the same cooler score as before, 170, but the frequencies this time are much different. Only 4.9 gigahertz this time on all cores as opposed to 5.1, but we do see the exact same voltage. I also noticed a variable called SP, which ASUS state is a platform evaluation variable, which is extremely vague, it was lower with the second 10900K, almost as if SP was some kind of overclocking grade for the CPU for how far it can be pushed in clock speed, almost as if it stands for silicon potential. In the end, we seem to get an okay performance boost by using the AI OC software. It was much better on the first 10900K that I tested and it can be unpredictable as it trains itself in the early stages. The big question is how far off was it from a completely dialed in manual overclock? The answer is still pretty far. The first 10900K that I tested can do 5.2 gigahertz at just 1.225 volts in AVX workloads and 5.3 at 1.32 in non-AVX workloads. So 100 megahertz higher and around 30 millivolts lower than what the AI OC tool achieved. The second sample can also do 5.2 at a slightly higher voltage and that's 300 megahertz over what we achieved with AI OC. Definitely some mixed experiences, but overall I found that a manually tuned overclock, if you know what you're doing, can achieve both a higher and more power efficient overclock than ASUS's AI OC software, at least in its current stage. This seems to be due to the lack of an actual CPU testing component within the tool, where it could stress test the CPU at certain clock frequencies and just step down the voltage after it passes each test, to approach a truly optimal overclock, just like you would manually, but automatic. It could then compare this result to a pre-trained data set from the same class of CPU to see where it fits in, and then assign an overclocking profile based on where it fits in the data set. 
that implementation is a lot more advanced as it actually considers what the CPU can hit and it does test the CPU, but it does require a lot more research on the motherboard vendor's behalf and a lot more resources and money. However, I do think it is an implementation that we might see in the future. Because as the differences between motherboards become slimmer and slimmer, I think this would be a great way for them to separate themselves from the competition. I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.